Hey YouTube, Zero Fossil Fuel. Today is Wednesday, June 29th, 2011, and uh, this is a Zero News update on the Mueller Motor Project from the garage. Um, been spending a lot of time experimenting with different types of coils. I have wound the Mueller conical style coil both in unifiller and bifiller. I have wound the 160 turn straight bobbing coil, unifiller and bifiller. I've been running uh, quite an extensive series of tests on the uh, different styles of coils and I've decided to move forward with just the straight 160 turn unifiller uh, straight bobbing coil for the remainder of the project until uh, until I uh, complete some tests with the uh, the completed assembly. I may unwind those later and rewind them by filler with a few less turns so that I have the extra length of wire that I need, but right now uh, we're going to go ahead with just the unifiller coil. I did receive the parts that I ordered to build the electronic circuit. I have uh, five complete sets of, of power MOSFETs, complementary P and N channel. I have uh, the uh, opto interrupters and I have some unipolar Hall effect devices in here as well just to play with. Not that I really believe that I'm going to need them. But um, one of the, th oh, the other thing that I wanted to point out, some, some people have been asking me what value shot key diodes I ordered. These are 1N5819, 1N5819. I'll try to post a complete parts list uh, at altenergy.org. You will find that uh, right here, okay? Don't ask me what my web address is. It's right here. You see this? Altenergy.org. If it was a snake, it would bite you. So please, don't ask where my website is. This is my website. Uh, anyhow, uh, enough ranting. Um, one of the things that, that I have discovered, I, actually there are several things that I have discovered, but the, one of the things that I have discovered that I want to talk about right now is, uh, of course, when you take a ferrite core and you insert it into the coil bobbin, you end up increasing the inductive reactance of the coil, which is essentially increasing the inductance of the coil. Um, it's about two and a half times the value of an air core with the ferrite inserted. Now, that by itself is not extraordinary. What I did find kind of unusual, though, is when I took these measurements for the inductive reactance with the coils assembled on the statters of the Mueller motor and the uh, blotch wall balancing magnets on the back side of the statters, I got a value that was quite low. And the value that I measured outside without the blotch wall magnets was almost double the inductance. And as it turns out, when you have a ferrite core inserted in your coil and you, and you put a neodymium magnet right up against the ferrite, the magnetic lines of flux, the static, not move, not 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 uh, fluctuating, but static magnetic lines of force through the center of the coil actually decrease the induct inductive reactance of the coil, hence the inductance. Um, that actually came as a bit of a surprise to me. the The other thing that I that I found as I was testing this motor is that um, I was playing around with a bunch of capacitors that I have in this bag right here and trying different just just throwing different values even before I knew what the inductance values were of the coils in advance I just kind of took a guess at what the inductance was I looked at a reactance chart and I said okay the the rotor is spinning at 3500 rpms that's giving me a uh, an AC frequency to the coils of 467 hertz what amount of capacitance do I need across what I believed was about three millihenries of inductance, and I was actually pretty close, to resonate at 466 hertz. And I started playing around with five, five microfarad caps, 10, 20, and 25 microfarad caps. And something quite extraordinary happened when I placed the 25 microfarad cap across the coils. Uh, it resonated, and the voltage spiked when I did that. Um, it seems like uh, just about this time last year or the year before, I think it was, uh, for the 4th of July weekend, I was talking about resonance. Remember the little pendulum uh, diagram that I drew on, uh, on, on an HHO cell and 
getting the HHO cell to resonate well. This right here, I am 99.99% .99 certain, is a, to make it work and to make it a self-runner, what you need to do is you need to design it as, an, a, as a resonant electromechanical assembly. Uh, I've decided, uh, I've determined that with the amount of inductance that I have, two coils in series, and 25 microfarad caps across the two coils, uh, I can get it to resonate at, uh, at the center at about 650 hertz. To get 650 hertz into the coils, I need to cause the rotor to spin at 4,875 RPM. I've already demonstrated that's not a problem. I've had this thing well over 6,000 RPM. Um, and I believe that once we, once this baby hits 88 miles an hour, you're going to see some serious stuff. Um, and uh, that's what I wanted to share with you right now. I'm uh, working very hard to finish up the coils so that I can put together the entire assembly. I have my schematic diagram. I'll uh, post a, uh, a copy of this at altenergy.org also. Where's that? Where, where, is, where am I going to post this? Right here. Okay. Uh, I will post it and it will be a, a modified schematic diagram of the uh, in showing the complementary MOSFET output circuitry so that uh, uh, you will see the actual finished schematic diagram of my driver circuit. And it's part of the driver circuit. There is a uh, back EMF recovery uh, diodes to feed back into the power supply rails, which I also am quite certain is going to uh, help push this thing over the edge. So for those of you who have become anxious and worried that uh, Z has been carried away in the black suburban, I'm still around. I'm still working on the project. The black suburbans have not showed up at this point. They're better off just leaving me alone uh, and completing the project because if these videos stop and I go away, you know I was on to something and you know exactly where to pick up where I left off. Um, it's coming. They can't stop it. The internet is unstoppable. We are unstoppable. The people of the earth have the right to live freely, and this is uh, this is my my effort in that regard. And uh, I hope uh, I hope that, of course, I am successful. I am following in the footsteps of some people who have worn some pretty big shoes, and they're big shoes to fill, the likes of Nikola Tesla and Bill Mueller. Um, and Romero UK, who, of course, was my inspiration to begin the build here. I hope you're having fun watching the series as much as I am uh, putting it on for you. I really am having a lot of fun with this build and uh, learning a lot about uh, generators and resonance and magnetic motors and all kinds of stuff. If, you're, if, you're, if you also are in the middle of building a Mueller motor re replication, I wish you the best of luck with it. Um, and uh, if you haven't subscribed to my channel, I hope you will. Please tell all your friends about the, the stuff that we're doing here. It's very important. We need to get everybody involved and uh, we need to save the world. That's all for now. Zero fossil fuel. Hope you all have a happy and safe July 4th. Unfortunately, uh, just as a quick uh, PS, uh, I do not have a working HHO cell this 4th of July. So there will, be, there will be no exploding empty Captain Morgan bottles this 4th of July, unfortunately. So uh, a little bummed about that, but I'll, I'll get over it. I am working on another resonance circuit, and this is it. Hopefully we get it running and uh, save the world. Everybody take care. Peace.